Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to troubleshoot your takeaway. All right, guys, Eric here back outside at the Bethlehem Golf Club. I'm gonna to talk to you today about how to troubleshoot your takeaway. Um, before we dig into that, two quick things. I want to let you guys know and give you a reminder about our three-day golf schools. The feedback has been incredible. Um, we have launched all of our golf schools for this year and the next coming months. If you would like to come join us for a three-day immersion event, you know, it really is the best way that I know how to take your game to the next level. Um, so we'd love to have you guys come and hang out with us for three days. We will put a link in the description down below. If you want to find out more information, feel free to touch base. We'd love to have you guys come up. Uh, if you can't do the three-day event or you can't come for in-person coaching, uh, we also built CogornoGolf.com for that purpose. It is the next best option. We have a ton of different courses on there. We have a lot of quick fixes. We have a lot of different practice sections on there. Uh, we also have our Facebook group, your ability to post your swing and join a community of us that we really wanted to build to help you get better at golf and enjoy the game more. We'd love to see you on CogornoGolf.com. Come join us and join our community. Link in the description down below as well. Now, troubleshooting your takeaway. Uh, as we're back outside, and obviously I'm seeing a lot more golf swings, everyone's getting ready to roll. I see a lot of the same issues, obviously, coming up in the backswing. And there's really two areas that I see a lot of issues coming up that I'm noticing I'm saying the same thing a lot over and over again, which is the takeaway position, how to fix it, and then also depth during the backswing. But during this video, I want to focus on the, the takeaway position and troubleshooting it. Now, um, what I want to do here is kind of explain, hey, during the takeaway, where are you supposed to be? Why is that relevant? Uh, if you're not there, what is causing that? And then how specifically to fix that and start practicing that? That's what I want to cover here today. So number one is where should you be in the takeaway video? So hopefully, unless this is your first video for us, you've seen we've done a bunch of takeaway videos and backswing videos. And what we like to do is create checkpoints, checkpoints in motion that you're supposed to hit as you're moving a club, kind of as a safe zone. And when we look at really good golfers, we see during the takeaway, that checkpoint is when the club uh, gets parallel to the ground. So this is the club parallel to the ground. When the club gets parallel to the ground for the first time in the backswing, we like to see the club head directly in line with the hands. So if this is my hands, this is my club head. They are right in line with each other. That would be my first checkpoint, right? Club head in line with the hands with the face slightly tilted down. Now I went through and looked at, usually every, every couple of years, I'd kind of catalog uh, golf swings. I look at the top 200 players in the world and what do they do during the takeaway? And like 98% of good players for the past decade I've been doing this, they get their club head even with the hands or slightly outside. Very rarely do I see good players inside, sometimes farther outside, but they're almost all uh, in line with their hands or slightly outside, right? So you model success here. We want to get that position. Now, oftentimes golfers will come in and they don't quite have that position correct, okay? And when I look at it from your uh, point of view, if you're not in this position, you're in one of four quadrants that would be an error. You're either high and outside, you're low and outside, high and inside, or low and inside. So it's kind of like four quadrants here. High and outside, low and outside, high and inside, low and inside. And there are really only two things that you do that control where the club head is, which is good news, because if you're in one of those four quadrants, which is an error, there's only one of two things you would need to fix. When I take my setup position, there's a thing called hinge, right? Radial deviation or hinge with your left wrist. Now, when I do that, notice the club goes up and down, right? So when I hinge, it goes up. And when I unhinge, ulnar deviate, it goes down. Hinge up, unhinge down. So when I'm here, the height of the club, whether I'm in that high or low quadrant, is dictated primarily by the amount of hinge I have. If I need the club to go higher, I would hinge my left wrist more. If I need it to go lower, I would unhinge it. That's it. Now, it does affect or it does uh, depend on where your club is at address. It has an effect on it, meaning if your shaft's very high at address, you're starting very unhinged. Odds are you're going to be unhinged. If you start really low at address, you have more hinge odds are you're going to have more hands. So it is, needs to be said at a dress position, we like to see the butt of the club in line with the belt line, right? That's a separate video, but um, assuming that shaft position, it's just hinge, okay? So if I do a takeaway and my club head is too low where it should be even with my hands, what do I need to do to get it higher? I need to add hinge. 
how much hinge do I need to have? I need to add enough so that when I'm recording it, by the time I get the first parallel, hands are just outside my right thigh, it's right in line. That's how much hinge, right? How early do I do it? Well, I like to see a gradual hinge from the setup position to first parallel. I'd rather see not a whole ton to the right leg for about the first six inches, um, but from about the right leg to takeaway position, I'm gradually hinging kind of from zero to 100 until I get right there. So that's the vertical component, hinge up or hinge down. How you know if you did it correctly or not is you can't guess. You have to give yourself feedback just like I would. I would record my first five to 10 swings, see where it's at and adjust that feel accordingly. The point of this video is if you look at it and you see you're too low and you're like, well, I don't know how to fix it. Yes, you do. You need to add hinge to the point where it's right in line with your hands. That's the vertical component of this. Now with those quadrants, I could also miss it by being inside or outside, okay? And the inside or outside motion is primarily dictated only by that number two thing, which is forearm rotation, right? So if I were to hold a club up, the more I rotate my forearms, the more the club head goes inside. The less I rotate my forearms, the more the club head goes outside. That's it. So if I'm back here and my club head's too far inside, I have too much forearm rotation. If my club head's too far outside, which is maybe not even a problem, but let's say it's, it's a problem too far outside, I have not enough forearm rotation. How much forearm rotation should I have from setup to there? You should specifically have enough to the point where the club head's even with your hands at first parallel, right? So if you're too far inside, you need to feel what? Way less, okay? If you're too far outside, you need to feel a, a bunch more and give yourself feedback with it. You're probably gonna have to exaggerate about 10 times more than you think. So you can't just do it when we're talking about how to practice. If you, if, let, let's say you're too far inside like this. And I say, Joe, okay, Joe, you're too far inside. You need to go here and you keep posing this. And you go, okay, well, this is my normal. I'm trying to get here. Okay, that feels like I'm, I'm kind of form, a little bit less form rotation than normal, maybe a little more hinge than normal. I mean, no big deal. Maybe on a scale of 10, that feels like a three out of 10 exaggeration. Joe goes up to hit the ball. He says, okay, I'm gonna feel those things. And what does Joe do? Joe goes too far inside again because he only exaggerated as much as he needed to in his pose. And the problem is whatever you feel in a pose is never gonna get you there in actual motion. When you add motion and a consequence of a hit, you have to exaggerate tenfold. So if this felt like Joe was too low and inside, he had, now he's too low and inside, a little quiz here, why? Too low, because he doesn't have enough hinge, so he needs to add more hinge. Too far inside, because of too much forearm rotation, so he's gotta take that out. Now he's perfect. Now that feels three out of 10. So now I'd say to Joe, hey, when you hit this, here's where we actually wanna be, but because you were here, let's say a foot inside, you need to feel a country mile outside in motion and when you actually feel this you'll go here then joe hops up he takes my word for it he feels a country mile outside and guess what we look at the video he records himself because he listens to our videos and it's perfect and then joe says oh my god that feels really exaggerated i say yep that's what it needs to feel like in the beginning but that feel will change over time it's constantly evolving you need to be constantly giving yourself feedback if on day one you feel a country mile outside that's good for day one. You don't reserve the right to go a country mile outside. I want you right here. You need to give yourself feedback and feel whatever you need to um, in the beginning. Now, when you're practicing this, you, me, and Joe, how I would do this is I would do what I just said. If I'm working on my takeaway, I would go here, realize wherever I'm at, understand how to get here, practice just kind of posing it, what am I feeling, and then overdo that, right? So if I'm Joe, I'm going, okay, here's what I literally want, my first rep. Rep number two, I'm over-exaggerating those two pieces. I know I need less forearm rotation and more hinge, so I'm gonna over-exaggerate twice, and then I'm gonna do a little shot. I've got an eight iron, and I'm gonna hit it about 70 yards. I got my phone on behind me, and I'm gonna see what my rehearsals look like, and then I'm gonna hit, and I'm gonna try and exaggerate. And I hit one, I absolutely do not care how I hit. I'd walk back, look at my phone, see where's my club head relative to my hands. Okay, it's still a little too low and inside. What does that mean? I didn't hinge and or um, I rotated my forearms too much. What am I gonna do? Balls back in, still eight iron, still the same shot. I rehearsed my literal, here's what I want. I'm gonna over exaggerate, over exaggerate. And then I'm still going eight iron about 80 yards. Now when I go eight iron 80 yards, I'm swinging at like literally 20% speed for that. 
I go back, check my phone, I look, and I just continue to adjust until I do it, and that's my one practice session. Next time I come and practice, guess what I do? I do the same thing over and over until when I'm doing this, this starts to just feel kind of normal and it's easy. And then I continue doing it, maybe move on to the next part. That's reality of getting better. That's how you troubleshoot your takeaway. Those are the two pieces that are involved. That's how you have to practice. So hopefully from here on out, everyone has everything they need to be able to fix uh, their takeaway. If you guys have any questions about these parts, as always, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, do us a favor, click the like button down below. Click the notification bell. Also, please subscribe if you haven't. If you do want more instruction from me tailored for you, check out cogornogolf.com. The link is in the description down below. Thank you guys.